going to skip ahead a little bit to something I saw a little bit later in the week. Well, Thursday, but uh, the, the well, Friday, yeah, Friday instead the next of Thursday. Day. Um, but it's related to that film. Um, it's sort of in the same subgenre. Yeah. Uh, it's called Downloaded, um, and it covers Napster. It, it looks exclusively at Napster, the software that um, when I was in college, it yeah. was the first sort of big file sharing application. It was designed entirely for music. Yeah. Um, and what's interesting about it is um, it, uh, it talks to everyone involved. It talks to the record executives. It talks to the artists. It talks to the creators and founders. They were all willing to talk about this. It even talks to someone from like the, the RIAA who doesn't work there anymore. Well, yeah. Um, but, <laughs> that uh, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But uh, what, it really talk- what it really focused on was the technology in itself isn't inherently evil. It's the way people used it. And that's kind of the argument these but other even guys were talking though, about. I mean, but at the same time, you're like, these guys are aware. Mm-hmm. They knew what it yeah. was going to be used for. Right. They didn't, they're, they're not innocent in all of this. Um, but... Sean Parker, who uh, you know is more famous now, I think, than he was then, because he was featured not him, but uh, Justin Timberlake played him in the Social Network right. brilliantly. Yes, yeah. Um, but uh, what uh, you know, what he talks about is they looked at it legally, and they were like, "We thought that it uh, that we were covered by this one little obscure clause that sort of uh, you know doesn't let you prosecute people who create." Uh, you know, a hosting location. Uh, So, um, but at the same time, it's like, they they also talk about how they were sort of hoping that they would become like the distribution mechanism. Like like they would become legit. Exactly. Um, But they just had such naivete about how the music industry worked and what long memories these executives were going to have. And yeah. you don't come at them with, hey, we're giving away all your stuff for free. Do you want to pay us for it now? It's like, no, no they don't. Yeah. Um, and there's a great quote in the uh, in the documentary where one of the guys was like, you know, I was friends with these guys and they told me that, hey, we're getting venture capital right now. And he was like, do not take that money. And he's, he literally said that the line that I think sums up the entire movie, you can't build a business on copyright infringement. It's like you can't do it. There's yeah. no there's no value there. There's no business there. Um, but it really covers the whole story of this guy who's just a guy who wasn't even really a programmer at the time. He was just somebody who had an idea and he figured out how to make it all work. Um, and it really discusses the cultural impact. And it focuses heavily on IU actually mm. because – I don't know if you were around at that time, Jason, but IU was like the first big university to say, no, no yeah. one Napster. We're blocking it. Um, and they talk they, – they use these old MTV news clips from like 1999 of like uh, – and I was wondering if I would like recognize the guy they interviewed because I mm-hmm. you know I work with a lot of the people in that department now. I didn't recognize the guy. But um, talking about how uh, you know uh, uh, Napster was 41 percent of the network traffic at IU wow. in 1999. And this is when you know IU is like one of the most – connected universities in the country. Uh, so it's that's kind of a big deal. The other thing I found really interesting was that this all happened between like 1999 and 2002. That was it. That's that's the timeline. Yeah. Um, and it covers like the court battles they went through and what they were doing in the meantime and how they got, you know, sold to different companies and moved around and how they didn't really make any money doing that because there was no money to be made. Yeah. Like they had all this venture capital, but they got sued out of them essentially. Mm-hmm. The other thing I really liked about this was that it doesn't really take like a, you know, we're going to tear down this system sort of thing. That yeah. I, I'm not interested. It's just almost like a historical con- Very context. historical. Like what did we do? What did they do right? What did they screw up on? Um, but you look at what they did and you look at how you get music now – you download it from the internet. Yeah. You buy it from iTunes. You buy it from Amazon. You yeah. buy it from a thousand different places. But it's all digital. Mm-hmm. That's how people want to listen to their music. So they were like five years ahead yeah. of that. And if they had, you know, and well, they even tried to like, yeah, to 
to commercialize it. They try to be like, okay, you got everything for free before, but now you got to come and pay yeah. for it. Obviously, no one's going to yeah, be like, just, okay, let's do this. Business-wise, they did not yeah. have a great instinct, but they had an amazing idea. Right. And the other th- nice thing about Napster was it was fast. Oh, yeah. It was fast. You know, you uh, you you typed in the name of the thing yeah, and it, it just was, popped it was, up. It was fast from what they I heard. They showed that in the documentary <laughs> how fast it was. Um, no previous experience with Napster, But I then swear. what was interesting was they talked about how after, after they got sued and basically had to shut things down, it was like, oh, well, finally, we got rid of Napster. But then it was like 20 other things that did the exact same thing now because they opened the bottle. They yeah. opened – you know, you can't get – you can't close Pandora's box, Jason. Right. And people figured it out. Oh, then you have Kazaa and BearShare and LimeWire and like a thousand other things that do that. Um, but what is nice to see is that at the end of the film, they were like, I, I didn't realize Sean Parker is Spotify. Mm-hmm. He came up with Spotify, which is a, an internet radio sort of thing, which is huge right now. Yeah. Um, and these uh, the, the, the two original guys, uh, I can't remember the other guy's name. Did I write it down here? I can't remember the main guy's if name. If you said it, I would instantly yeah. know it. Um, but uh, they're, they're working together again. They're doing another project. And now I feel like they can still have that great idea, but then they can sort of actually figure out a way to do it legally. Uh, this one's directed by a guy named Alex Winter, which if the name sounds familiar, it's because he was a pretty well-known actor in the yeah. 80s. He was Bill from Bill and Ted, um, but he's doing a lot of directing now. But uh, that was that was a, a, a very good film. I, I liked it a lot. Cool. A Place for Film is recorded at WFIU Studios in Bloomington, Indiana.